So today, we're going to wrap up state space. 30, 50, week 7, lecture 3. So wrap up state space. So we're going to do basically transfer function to state space. How do we do it? Convert that. And then state space to transfer function. I'll put a star around it because, okay, if I ask you, it's not if, it's when I ask you state space on the exam, and there goes my... <laughs> okay, so we're back on the projector. Right, so what I was going to say was when I ask you state space on the exam, it'll just be like a circuit or a mechanical system and find the state space representation, right? Um, so one way you can do it, and that's what I'm assuming most of you will do, is you'll find the transfer function and then go to state space. As you will see, it's much easier. Okay. However, state space to transfer function involves just pure linear algebra. right? So I'll just show you how to do it for completeness sake, but I'm not going to ask you any questions on it. Right? It might be on your homework, but on the exam it's not coming. Okay. So before that, there was a good, very good point which Chris made. That is, there is a fire drill next Friday, I don't know what date it is, let's find out, it's the first, okay, so 11, 1 according to Chris, so this implies there's supposed to be an exam that day, so we're going to postpone exam to Monday, the following Monday, so which is 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, okay, and there is also no class next Friday because of the fire drill apparently being right smack in the middle of lecture, okay? Yeah, let's just cancel it because what we have, we have actually, so what are we going to do? The reason is we, for the next three weeks, 8, 9, 10, we're going to do a lot of examples on how to, how this material applies, right? Specifically, it's going to lead into 3720, okay? So it's very, and hopefully that will not, it's to help you understand what we have learned so far, right, by applying it. So basically looking at how do you use the poles and zeros to, in the S domain, to understand the time response. Okay, that's basically the essence of control theory. So that's why it's okay to uh, not have class in the sense we are basically re kind of reviewing material, right? Your like, final exam, 90% of it will be material before state space, okay? 10% will be like the state space stuff I told you about, but primarily it'll be like uh, what is called um, pole zeros and system response, right? So the 10% of it. 90% will be all finding transfer functions for physical systems, finding uh, DC motor characteristics and all that stuff. Right? Yeah, question. So let's see. Uh, let's see if... So let's just look at the syllabus. Two. Okay, here it is. So on the exam, it's 90% of your, so again, uh, Next Friday, we have the fire drill, okay? So I'm going to postpone this exam to the Monday of week 9. So 90% of your final exam will be material before week 5, okay? The remaining 10% will be material after week 5. And primarily, it will focus on this stuff, right? Pole zeros and system response. So you could say 90% of the final exam is this stuff, 8% of the final exam is this stuff, and 2% is state space, right? Does that answer your question? Well, exam two is like what it says here. And on exam two as well, 90% of exam two will be this, DC motors, okay? 10% will be state space. Yeah, like I said, like I just said, this part here, you really have to, I and mean, this is like the glue weeks 8 through 10 between 3050 and 3720, right? If you really want to understand 3720, and you really want to excel in control engineering, and you want to have fun with it, you really have to understand this. 
How do the poles and zeros correspond to the system response? Poles and zeros, we'll, we briefly mentioned this a few weeks back, but I'll talk about it again. And this obviously is not on exam two. Okay. This will definitely be on the final exam. So any other questions before you get started? Okay, so let's look at transfer function to state space. In the sense, so this is the first one. So transfer function to state space. Suppose I give you a transfer function, okay? You can do this in general for n uh, variables. No, oh, here it is. My notes. That's what I was looking for. Okay, so let's say I have x of s, y of s, b1 s1 plus b0. Let's just take a first order polynomial for the numerator and a second order polynomial for the denominator. And let me start throwing out some terminology since we'll get back to this next week. So you could say that this transfer function has two poles, okay? So poles are the roots of the denominator. In other words, if for a polynomial transfer function, they're the roots of the denominator. The definition of a pole, I think we talked about this a little bit. Do you remember what, I, I don't, I remember us talking about, I don't remember when. What's a pole of a transfer function? Do you remember from a few weeks back? It's the values of s which make the transfer function go to infinity, all right? So if you have a polynomial transfer function, the poles of the transfer function are the roots of the denominator. Because when the denominator is zero, the transfer function goes to infinity, assuming there is no cancellation, right? That is, this is in the simplest form. So as a concrete example, again, I'll just put this on a side. We'll visit this next week. So if I have h bar of s is s minus 1 over s squared plus 1, what are the poles of this transfer function? So we have two poles, S1, 2, what are they? Huh? Almost. So in other words, what values of S make the denominator go to zero? Because that will make the transfer function blow up, right? None. S is a complex number. Almost. So one is, uh, let's use I, right? So let's use J, okay, in electrical engineers, all right? But there are two of them, right? Because it's a square. So what is the other one? So in other words, s squared plus 1 equals 0. So one of them is plus j. Okay. So this implies s squared equals minus 1. Yes, exactly. So plus or minus j. Right? So these are the poles and the zeros of h bar of s or what? So what values of s make the transfer function go to 0? 1. So it's got two poles and a single 0. And actually, these are abbreviated. So here it is p1, 2. So it's abbreviated. And then if you want to call this s3 as 1, and this is called a 0, z. Okay. The whole point is these poles and zeros, by just looking at these poles and zeros, you can figure out what the time response is. It's very useful, okay? very, very powerful. And this is the crux of control systems engineering. So you have to look at the poles and zeros and figure out how the time response, how you shape it. Again, we'll start talking about it next week. But getting back to this, so the goal is to, from this transfer function, to get the state space representation. And the concept is state variables are internal to the system and they are a measure, whatever that means, of memory, okay? So these are the two primary concepts we're going to use in extracting the state space information from this. So let's write down what we know that is, we are extracting a state space representation. So y of s over x of s is b1 s1 plus b0 over a2 s squared plus a1 s 
plus a is 0. Okay? So that is the definition of a transfer function. So now, what I need to do is I need to get this into the time domain. Because state space is a time domain representation, yes? So how do we do that? So let's cross multiply. And the beauty of this method is although the transfer function assumes zero initial conditions, you can still get the state space representation from it. Or you can still get a state space representation from it. It's like pretty cool, right? I'm going to leave out the s to the power 1. So I want to take the inverse Laplace transform of the differential equation, right? Because I want to get it in the time domain. So this, I'm going to assume, obviously, the Laplace transform of y is y of s, and the Laplace transform of little x time domain is x of s. Okay. Given this fact, I mean assumption, like, what is the inverse Laplace transform of s squared times y? So I'm multiplying by s squared in the s domain. What is the corresponding operation in the time domain? Second derivative. So this will become y double dot, right, times a2 plus a1 y dot plus a0y equals b1x dot plus b0x. Okay? And there is my differential equation. We really don't care. This has zero initial conditions for the transfer function because in state space, it's a differential, I mean, it's a matrix representation of the differential equation. So if you want, or if you want, we can put in initial conditions, yes? So it just uh, comes along for free in some ways. So, But now, we need to pick state variables, okay? So an intuitive, what is an intuitive choice for state? So let's think, we need to write this in state space, okay, differential equation. So going back to our previous lectures, how do we intuitively pick the state variables given a differential equation? The output, right? That's a very good point. Because here, let's say we haven't defined an output. Okay? But basically, you want to look at, you want to pick your state variables as what? So one choice could be the function and all its derivatives, yes? So it's y, y dot, OK? So if you look at this fellow here, you need two initial conditions to solve this. Um, like uh, You need two initial conditions on the left-hand side, yes? And you will see that there is actually a problem with this. So let's say I just pick y and y dot as my state variables. Is it enough? Why not? Well, I can, I'm going to get, so what do I want? I want x dot equals ax plus bu, this form, right? y equals cx plus du, yes? So in x dot, if I pick y, y dot, right? x dot gives me y dot and y double dot. Yes? Yeah. This one? This one? Because this is the definition of state space. That's why. So there is a proof in systems theory that if you have any linear constant coefficient differential equation, you can write it in this form. That's why. And we didn't cover that proof. That's graduate level material. Yeah, of course. Yes, that's right. So this will get y dot, y double dot. But is it enough? That's my question. But does this take care of all the derivatives in this differential equation? Because remember, we were just looking at the left-hand side. Is it all the derivatives? Are there more derivatives? Well, the initial condition will be incorporated. Uh, I'll show you how when you write it in state space form. So the initial condition is not the issue. My question is, is y double dot, y dot, are they the only derivatives in this equation? Are there any other derivatives? Yes, there is x dot. So you could say, OK, let me just put this in here. OK? But this is not very elegant. OK? 
Because if you look at it, it's like, yeah, remember the last few lectures, we just had derivatives of functions here, of the same function, yes? We didn't have two different functions. So there's a very, very nice trick you can play, and that's this, right? So we won't use one since uh, we can play this nice trick. That's what control theory is like. It's really cool, in my opinion, in the sense the tricks involved are very simple. So what I can do is I can write this transfer function like this, right? Here is my input. Here is my output. Okay? Yeah? Because it's just it's just the product of these two, right? Cast blocks in cascade. But watch this. Let's see what notation I use. Let's call this W of S. Okay. So therefore, what I get is uh, let's do it this way. This is equivalent to doing this, okay? And you will see, I mean, you can do it this way, but let me do it this way. It doesn't matter which way we do it. A1s plus A0. I'm just going to swap these around because I can do that, right? In the sense, and let's not call this W. A0 plus A1s plus A0. Y of S. This is W of S, okay? But watch. Therefore, what we get is W of S over X of S is 1 over A2S squared plus A1S plus A0 and Y of S over W of S equals B1S plus B0. Yes? So there's a transfer function for this. There's a transfer function for this. And the net transfer function is the product of these two. You can see the W's cancel, and I get Y of S over X of S is B1S plus B0 over A2S squared plus A1S plus A0, right? I mean, this is the this is the beauty of math, right? Just by simply writing it like this, you will see how it easily lets us get the state space representation. We will actually go around this problem. I mean, there's not really a problem, right? It's not very elegant. And it's not what people do. So watch. Now, let me take the inverse Laplace transform of this. Well, before that, let me write it out like this. You see what's going on. Uh, let's see. B1S plus B0. W of S is Y of S. Because the inverse Laplace transform of this is what? A2 W double dot plus A1 w dot plus a0 w is x of t and b1 w dot plus b0 w is y of t okay now watch let me just pick now my state variables as w w dot okay So what do I what I want is an equation of this type x dot equals ax plus bu y equals cx plus du right let's see if I can incorporate both of these differential equations which describe my system into this form by just picking these two state variables okay and turns out you can so this implies um, what x dot I'm just going to write this is w dot w double dot yes therefore w dot w double dot from these two equations let's call this one let's call this two so I can get this from one and two 
w w r plus something times my x, which is my input, and my y My x is my u, okay, it's my input, right? So what is it? So what is the first row of the A matrix and the first row of the B matrix when you have w dot here? So what is it? Yeah, 0, 1, and 0, okay? Because w dot, should equal all well, w dots here, so w dot should equal w dot. That's it. What's w double dot? So can I get an expression for w double dot from either of these differential equations? Which one do you use? I want to get w double dot, right? Which one do you use? One or two? One, right here. Okay, so what is it? So if you look at it, W double dot, you take these two expressions to the right hand side, you get negative signs on A1 and A0. So you just got to be a little careful. You get minus A0 over A2, minus A1 over A2, and then 1 over A2 of X. Okay? And my output Y, you get from the second equation as a linear combination of these derivatives, b0, b1, and there is no x contribution, right? So, before I address any questions, let's think about what we did, right? In the sense, let's go back. Uh, let me actually zoom out even more. All right. So, remember the concept that state variables are internal to the system, okay? Because the choice of memory, like, I don't, like I, we discussed in the last couple of lectures, there's no one particular choice, right? There are many equivalent state variable descriptions for a system. So, in this case, this signal here, W, is our internal signal, okay? And notice how our state space description is in terms of W. That's point number one. Point number two, by playing this interesting trick, Y is still my output, and X is still my input, right? Which is what the original transfer function indicated, which wasn't so obvious here, okay? Actually, to be honest, I don't even know if you, this choice of state variables will work to write a state space description. Okay? Actually, uh, it won't, right? Actually, uh, just looking at this, you can't use this to write a state space description. You can try. It just won't work. And not only that, this has three state variables, right? I don't think you can get a state space description from this. You have to do this trick, but it's a very beautiful trick in the sense that it really illustrates what do you mean by state variables? Okay. Question? It's not only, it's not, yeah, it reduces our, um, that's a good point, right, what Tim's making. If you notice, our, the highest polynomial is second order, right? There is no reason why we need to get a third order, three by three, make sense? So all this is like, it's, I mean, this is one of the, this, this example really illustrates the power of math, right? Just by playing this trick that this is, I can write by, well, it's just as, I don't know how else to say it. It's just, I can split this up into A times B. And that really helped us write, I mean, it helped us isolate the state variable, helped us write a, two by two state matrix, which corresponds to the fact that our system is second order. Right? But if you could say, what is one disadvantage with this method is this state variable W may need not correspond to like the voltage across a capacitor, right? Or the current through an inductor. It's just some internal state variable. 
So any questions on this? Yeah. Yes. So thanks for Chris for reminding me. Scott asked about initial conditions as well. Yeah. This is just a differential equation, right? So although you had no initial conditions in the transfer function, your initial conditions are zero. If you want to take care of initial conditions, it'll come in here, right? And we're not going to cover how to solve this differential equation. It's a matrix operation. It's linear algebra. And we actually don't even cover this in undergraduate curriculum for the most part, right? It's graduate level stuff. Yeah. Oh, W, yeah. Uh, so W, so I'll may do one better. W of T may not have any, it may not, it just, it may, but it may not have any physical correspondence or any, let me, any association with physical, so I'll put physical in quotes because it's just an engineering definition. So with physical or an engineering way to look at this, state variables, a mathematician really doesn't care, right? But what I mean by physical state variables, for example, voltage across cap or current through inductor. So, so physical state variables or memory variables. So this W need not have any association with it. Yeah. It might for some system, I don't know, but that's what physical means. This is what you're asking, Tim? Yeah. So W need not. Right. So the projector is going a little boinkers. But back, right. So any questions on transfer function to state space? So I kind of did it. I didn't do it in general, but in the case, where the numerator of the transfer function is not one, right? In that case, it's very easy because if this was one, then you really don't have this problem, yes? You just get x of t here. Yeah, I did this so I can get this w. I mean, you can do it this way, right? Yeah, I knew this was going to cancel. Right? Yeah. But in general, you can extend this to like n variables. Your book does it. You just get an n by n matrix. That's all. What do you mean? These are two fractions, right? It doesn't matter what I have in here. Like in the sense, this is in simplified form. Yeah, this will always work for polynomials. The reason is in the time domain, these polynomials in the, in the S domain, polynomials corresponds to derivatives in the time domain. So this will always work. Where you will have, will have issues is if the transfer functions are not polynomials in S. And there is one practical system, the delay system, whose transfer function is e to the minus st. Right? Or, so when you have delays physically, the transfer function is not a polynomial. It's an exponential, right? And we will talk about that in 3720. There's a way to deal with it. You can do a polynomial approximation for E, right? But pretty much all practical systems, when you take the transfer function, when you linearize and take the transfer function, you get polynomials. That's the other reason why this method is like very, very powerful. Here? I mean, there's not, it's, mathematically, it's slightly different, right? In the sense, if I, uh, let me do this. Let me call this, I don't know, W. I don't want to use U. Let me call this F. Right? So let's do this if you want. Let's see what happens. So note. Uh, so note. So let me just copy this. Copy. So I'm just checking the time. So we got plenty of time. Because transfer function, uh, state space to transfer function is a little mathematical. So I'll just show you how to do it. But anyway, let's cover this. So therefore, what we have f of s over x of s is b1s1 plus b0. y of s over f of s is a2s squared plus a1s plus a0. So the, uh, did I do this right? Uh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I screwed something up. Hold on, that's wrong. Yeah, there you go. That's better. 
because the product should be, uh, so if I multiply these two, I should get B1S1 plus B0 over this, okay? So this implies F, okay, this is not good for us because of this, right? B1X dot plus B0X, so if you take the inverse Laplace transform, you get A2Y double dot plus A1Y dot plus A0Y equals F of T, okay? So this actually doesn't do anything for us because we want our derivatives on F, right? Because this is our internal state variable. Yes? This is basically just saying A2Y double dot plus A1Y dot plus A0Y equals B1X dot plus B0X. Which is exactly this. Yeah, we gotta change, you gotta change the way we approach this because notice now that by this approach, okay, you have your derivatives on your W, which is your internal state variable. And it is not obvious at all that you can write this differential equation. Let me zoom out. It's not obvious at all that you can write this differential equation in this form, okay? I mean, there's, n there's no way, like there's no x dot at all here, right? So to prove this is actually equivalent to this, you have to find out what x dot is, okay? And do b1 x dot plus b0, and say that's actually equal to this, and you can, right? But not at all obvious. But in transfer function, it's obvious. This trick is not. So very interesting. So any other questions? These are good questions. Yeah, you can. You just have to. Yeah, we just have to. What I would recommend you do for all systems from now is find the transfer function. If you want to get a state space representation, right? Find the transfer function and play this trick. You will always get a state space representation. That's what people practically do, right? No, it's not like you don't bother. You just, uh, this is a higher level method to what we were doing. What we were doing is we we're trying to write the differential equation and trying to identify the state variables in terms of the physical memory variables. You can do that. Well, it just depends, right? Like you know, what I would do is I'll try to use the, this physical state variable method. Remember we were doing this last lecture for a circuit we were trying to write the differential equation so we can identify the derivatives on the voltages across the capacitor and derivatives on voltages across the inductor. Right? You have to do the equivalent thing for mechanical systems. And sometimes you may not right, be able to do it. Just depends on the system. You have to be very good with setting up differential equations. If not, you, this method always works. Right? Question? Yeah, that's all I'll ask. Yeah, I'll just say find the state space operation for this system. So I'll give you an input and an output, okay? I have to give you that, yes? So you just find the transfer function and do this method. You will always get a state space representation. Yeah. Yeah, it is one layer removed in the sense... So, so Scott's question is, is one level removed. It is in the sense these state variables need not correspond to any physical memory variables. But can you use this method to find the physical memory variables? Yes, you can, right? Because these this completely describes the system. So once you find W of T, uh, it, I mean, we can do, I don't know if there's an example. Like we can do one. Um, but I don't have time today. I'll probably do one like next lecture. Right? So because this is just a, Differential equation representation of your system. Right? So this completely describes your system. So once you find Ws, there will be an appropriate uh, expression in the time domain which will give you, like for example, the voltage across the capacitor or the displacement of the mass. Okay. It's just trying to write it directly in terms of physical memory variables may not, it, it's not always like straightforward, like we're doing circuit examples. Okay. I can do a mechanical example. It's the same idea. I'll do one next time. But let's say I give you a system and ask you, find the state space representation. I have to give you an input and I have to give you an output, right? So you find the transfer function and then just play this trick. 
And you'll always get a safe space of precision. Do they really correspond to the physical memory variables? Not necessarily. I'm sure I can cook up an example of a system where if you apply this method, this W and W dot will probably be voltage across the capacitor current through the inductor. Just I have to cook up an example. Any other questions? Okay, this whole like uh, states, transfer function to state space is very, it's pretty intuitive, right? Well, let's do the state space to transfer function. So that is, and this is a star. I'm just going to do this for completeness. There might be a homework problem on this. I'll definitely not ask you this on the exam because as you will see, it involves Laplace transforms of matrix, well, in matrix in linear algebra space. So all I need to do is take this sucker, right, and then find out from here, so here is state space. So what is the transfer function representation? To do that, I'm just going to take, let's call this 1, 2. So I'm going to take the Laplace transform of 1. So I'm going to assume zero initial conditions because I'm finding the transfer function. So on the left-hand side, the Laplace transform of 1 gives me S, S vector of S, okay, is A X vector of S plus B U of S, okay? So this is, so X vector is defined as x1 of s, x2 of s, x3 of s, dot, 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 xn of s, okay? And then Laplace transform of 2 is defined as, I mean, it's not defined, it's y of s, is c x of s plus d u of s, okay? So what I want is the transfer function is defined as output over input, yes? So I want to eliminate my x vector. So how do I do that? Well, linear algebra. So 3 implies that my, so I get my x from this equation, I substitute it in this equation, and that eliminates my x, yes? Mathematically, but it's all matrices. So you got to be very, very careful, right? So from 3, my, let me do this. Let me do this step by step, okay? S of x, because these are not scalars, is B U of s. Yeah? So that I can do, right? I can move this vector to the, this side. I get a negative. That's not a problem. But let's say I factor out, quote, unquote, an x from here. Can I write this S minus A? Remember, these are mate, this is a vector, a column vector. This is a matrix. So how do I write this properly? In other words, let's look at the dimensions. Okay, What are the dimensions of this? What are the dimensions of this guy? Huh? N by 1. Okay? This is a scalar for us. It's a one by one. What are the dimensions of B? The B vector. What are the dimensions? This one. What are the dimensions? N by one. That's good. Okay. So, I mean, N by one times one by one. This is a scalar. Right? It's N by one. It's just going to multiply all the entries. So, what should, so on the left-hand side, I should get n rows in one column, yes? So what should the dimensions of this guy be? be? Ah, be careful. So if you get one row by n columns, you get one by one, yes? Huh? You gotta, yeah, this, so this, this way this is very tricky. Right? This has to be n by n, yes? So we're getting warm. The sense, what are the dimensions of A? So again, go back to a particular example. What are the dimensions of A? N by N. In general, it's N by N, right? And this is a usual math trick, right? Go back to a smaller example. Right? So if you can't do N, 
go to like two yes you can prove it actually uh let's be careful so chris is uh, does S have to be a square matrix or does this have to be a square matrix? S is just S, right? So Chris is right. This has to be N by N, right? Gotta be. Then we're we we set, right? N by N minus N by N is N by N. Awesome. But S is just a variable, right? So S is, what are the dimensions of S? One by one. So how do I get an N by N S? Identity, <laughs> very important. Okay, so you have an n by n identity matrix. In other words, you simply cannot factor out this x and say there is one here. No, there is i. Yeah, it's linear algebra. Yes, it's linear algebra. And you have to also be very careful of how you multiply the inverse. Now, there is what is called as a left side inverse and a right side inverse. We're not going to cover that, right? For us, so I can't simply do one over this. Okay, so in other words my x is going to be si minus a inverse b u of s okay and when you have scalars the inverse is just the reciprocal okay but in general this is a matrix inverse that's why i'm not going to ask you this on the exam right it's really involved so you take five so we have finally eliminated our x you plug this in four here is the transfer function, right? In the sense, we're almost done. Phi in 4 implies y of s is going to be. So let me zoom out so you can see what's going on. So I'm going to get rid of this x, okay? And the only reason I do this is it's a good exercise in linear algebra. It gives you like math practice. C times si minus a inverse b which is exactly x, all right? C multiplied, there is a u of s plus d, u of s. For us, u of s is a scalar. y of s is a scalar. It doesn't have to be in general, all right? We're not doing MIMO systems, multiple input, multiple output. So I can just factor out the u, okay? And say y of s over u of s is going to be c, si minus so here is the how do you find the transfer function given a state space representation which involves a b c and d matrices okay it's c times si minus a inverse b plus d is my state space to transfer function it's very mathematical right and there goes you know my computer die so there's only one more thing left lecture could handle linear algebra Right. All right. So by dimensions, I mean the dimensions of the matrix. Okay. So, what is the dimension? Of this? this is a scalar, right? It's a scalar transfer function. Yes. This is not matrix. It's not like you have like three or four transfer functions. When in 3720, if you do that inverted pendulum, guess what? This will become matrix. Okay. It's a classic example of a physical. It's an academic system which is which, for which you need state space to control. You, it's really hard to do that using classic control. And where state space is heavily used is in if you work for like uh, Lockheed Martin or Raytheon or even Rockwell Collins, who do military contracts, um, when you talk about aircraft control systems, oh, it's state space. Everything is like state space. Right? There are multiple surfaces. You'll have like 10 by 10 matrices. Right? It's, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> for me, it's fun. <laughs> so, so it's one by one, yes? So what should the dimensions of this sucker be? Let me, let me write it here. So this is one by one, yes? So what about the dimensions of this guy? One by one, right? So let's go step by step, see if we're correct. What are the dimensions of D? One by one, right? So again, if you don't remember this, here, go back to the old example, right? It's a scalar. That's good. We're good, right? So what should the dimensions of this fellow be? Huh? What should it be? One by one, right? So let's check if it is one by one, okay? I'm not going to write this because it's getting nasty, like, ugly. Because this one 
is simply a scale. The one by one means it's a scalar function of S. For example, scalar means, let's be careful, right? Here, this is a one by one matrix, right? That's what I mean by scalar function, as opposed to a matrix function. So that in that context, I'm using scalars, right? So in other words, this is not like a two by one matrix. In the So in the case of your uh, inverted pendulum, right, you have two inputs, which is the position of the cart and the angle of the pendulum. You have one output, yes? So this will be a, a one row, two column matrix, potentially. Okay, it'll be a matrix. Because you have a transfer function from your cart position to your uh, output, you also have a transfer function from your pendulum position to your output. Makes sense? That's what I mean. Okay? It's a good question. So if you don't understand this, go back to like practical examples. And I wouldn't say this is not practical, but it's very abstract. Okay, so this is one by one, right? What are the dimensions of SI? So the dimensions of SI minus A is N by N, right? What are the dimensions of its inverse? In by n, it's got to be the same thing, right? So let me just actually write this out. So c times si minus a inverse times b, this is n by n. What are the dimensions of b? n by 1, right? It's n rows in one column. What are the dimensions of c? 1 row and n columns, right? So if I multiply this, what happens? 1 by n times n by n gives me 1 by n, yes? 1 by n times n by n, n by 1 gives me 1 by 1. We're set. So that, that's that's all you can do. So anyway, that's about it for state space. I recommend if you uh, have difficulty understanding this, and most people when they when they see it for the first time, they have difficulty. Go back to you. The best example is that inverted pendulum, right? It's a very nice example. So let me see. We have like a couple of minutes. So let me just do a quick Google search and see if I can get an inverted pendulum mathematical model. Should look at that, right? Specifically. Quanzer is the name of the company. They're a nice, they're in Canada, and that's their equipment in 3720 lab, right? The control lab. Inverted pendulum mathematical model. I don't know if it's up there somewhere. Uh, practitioner's guide. Um, I don't know. Let's see what this is. Practitioner's guide. It's like some proprietary information. It's 15 pages. Theory, aha, uh -huh. inverted pendulum, here it is, okay? So you got two state variables. One is the angle, The uh, sorry, two inputs, I'm sorry, two inputs. One is this angle, the other is where this card is, and you have one output, which is the motor voltage to position the card. So basically, for people watching the video, they can't see this, you do this, right? You balance it by moving the card, okay? Let's see if they have... Control algorithm, derivation, motor gear radius, so blah, blah, blah. Here is all the derivation. They use the energy approach. Aha. So notice they have a, uh, they have four state variables. Position of the cart, velocity of the cart, okay? Position, the angular position of the pendulum angular velocity of the pendulum. You need these four state variables to implement the control application. Although you have two inputs and one output. Make sense? So I highly recommend you guys look at this. Right? I'm not going to ask you this on the exam, of course. And there's not also 3720 material. Right? When I teach 3720, I just do a demo to show how it works. It's a demo the equipment. It's not, you're not responsible for it. In 4720, you can do this. Right? But yeah, please look at this. If you really want to understand state space, uh, and interesting, they don't, they use what is called as the Lagrangian approach. They use, we never use this. They say that the energy should be conserved. Kinetic energy uh, and the, some of the kinetic and the potential energy. What is C? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's equal to some constant amount. Yes, the sum of the kinetic, some of the energies, right? It's called the Lagrangian approach. There's another way to derive the mathematical description of your system, energy conservation. 
and we don't do this till graduate school. All right, so we're done with stage face. See you Monday.